Hi, I'm Akshay Gill, director at MakerMax. And at MakerMax, we have created specialized online curriculums where we're, we're teaching courses that take you from the very basics of electric vehicles all the way to advanced topics in batteries, in BMS, in power electronics, DC-DCs, motor controls, and even branching out further into specialized topics like battery safety, like EMI testing, like understanding of the standards that govern the QA procedures of electric vehicles, including SAE standards, ISO, IEC standards. There's a lot of different things to learn, and we take you through that journey in a very practical, hands-on oriented way through specialized hardware kits that we have created. And these hardware kits are shipped to your door, and these are palm-sized versions of the hardware that you find in electric vehicles. So you get a really good chance of working with the hardware uh, right next to you in the de on your desk. And while you're studying the course, you get a chance to actually work with the hardware and, and learn the hardware aspects, the, the software aspects, as well as the theoretical um, and intuitive aspects of electric vehicles. So today, I'm here to talk to you about thermal runaway in batteries. This is a term that comes up very often when we're discussing battery safety. So it's important to understand what it is and why it is so important. So thermal runaway, when someone says that term, what they're trying to say is that there was a negative chain reaction, right? A negative chain reaction because negative meaning that it was causing harm and there was some sort of a basically it was a bad thing that was happening and it was a chain of events it was not just a single event but a chain of events that led to the final devastation if you're looking at a single cell so one say 18650 cylindrical lithium-ion cell a thermal runaway is not just caused all of a sudden it's a gradual procedure and but the, gradu the graduality of a procedure may happen over a few months or may happen instantaneously, right? So let's understand what that chain reaction is so we can understand why it happens and how we can control it. Okay, so when we say thermal runaway, before that even got to that stage and there was a final thermal runaway event where in some cases there could have been a fire or it could have been an explosion of that cell, before that, the first thing that started happening was that some of one of the rules, one or many of the rules the, that govern a single lithium ion cell or a group of lithium ion cell, uh, cells was violated. And what I mean by that is that, for example, an 18650 lithium ion cell has a rule of overcurrent. So if you demand too much current from that battery, from that cell, I mean, so th that cell will heat up because of internal resistance. So because of that heat being generated, if that heat cannot be taken fast, um, like as fast as it's being generated, then the temperature of that cell will rise. And when the temperature of that cell rises, if it gets beyond a certain point, that's when we start initiating stage one of thermal runaway. And in stage one, certain reactions start happening inside the lithium ion cell. The lithium starts combining with the electrolyte, the electrolyte sl slowly starts vaporizing. So these are reactions that are catalyzed by that higher temperature. And the higher temperature was caused because one of the many rules that govern a lithium ion cell was violated by that product or by that system that was using the lithium ion cell. So now we have a rising temperature environment inside that lithium ion cell that is causing certain chemical reactions inside it. And unfortunately, unfortunate for us and for that cell, these reactions that have now been catalyzed are also exothermic in nature. So they, when, with, when the reactions are happening inside the cell, more heat is being released now, right? So the heat rise is, is first it was rising, and because of those reactions, it's rising even faster now. And this will cause stage two of thermal runaway. So now that we're in stage two of thermal runaway, there are further chemical reactions that are catalyzed that wouldn't have happened in stage one. And because the temperature has 
cross the stage one threshold, reach stage two. Uh, two, now the stage two reactions start to catalyze and start to happen. And this will generate even more heat and start to rise the pressure inside the cell. So now we have a high temperature, high pressure environment that has been created inside the cell. Is it all bad now? Like we can't do anything? No, that's not true. There are certain safety mechanisms that are present in some cells. For example, a cylindrical cell has a safety release valve. So this safety release valve is meant to equalize the pressure between, uh, between the outside surroundings of what's outside the cell with the inside of the cell. So this is kind of one of the last attempts to try to equalize that pressure that has been built up because of the failure of the cell that has built up so that through that safety valve, when that safety valve gets, gets uh, burst open, that vaporized electrolyte and other vapors, the high pressure uh, kind of drives them out and that pressure of the high pressure inside the cell equalizes with the surrounding. And this with the attempt to bring down the catalysis of further reactions, which will lead to stage three of thermal runaway, right? So the safety valve bursts and the, the vapors start to, um, to, to release from the cell. And in most cases, the thermal runaway will get controlled here. In some cases where the battery pack is not designed properly, this vaporized electrolyte will actually cause a propagation of that failure of a single cell into adjacent cells. And now the adjacent cells will also get into a high temperature environment. And this will start to catalyze stage one in adjacent cells, right? So this is, why, this is why it's important to understand the thermal runaway procedures in a single cell, as well as understand what happens if my battery pack is not designed properly. If I could have just isolated a single failure in a cell and caused the failure to, um, to stop in that, in that isolated corner. Instead of that, now because of the poor design of my pack, the adjacent cells have also gone into thermal runaway. And this is where the propagation of that failure will really cause a lot of devastation. Right, so this is why thermal runaway is important, but it's also important to realize that it is a catalysis of reactions that are, that are um, executed stage wise, right? So the, the high temperature environment first executes stage one of thermal runaway of stage one of failure. And that stage one of failure then executes stage two of failure. So at each stage, we have a chance of controlling that. And at each stage, we gotta be careful to not to not uh, get that, um, that failure to propagate into the surrounding material. So this is why thermal runaway is so important to understand. And this is why it is talked about so often. In the end, in stage three, you must have heard of sometimes and you must have seen in the news battery fires um, that have happened in, in vehicles, in scooters, in battery factories, in other consumer electronics. Um, so these kinds of events will happen when stage three of thermal runaway happens and goes beyond that, right? So if we are not able to control that reaction of a single cell propagating to the surrounding cells and all these cells then start to, uh, to vaporize their electrolyte and unfortunately get to stage three of a high temperature, high pressure environment, then we will have a devastation of whatever that, uh, wherever that battery pack is sitting. If it's inside a product, then that product will see uh, a full failure. And if, it, if it's sitting isolated, even in a battery factory, then that whole battery will see a failure. And if other batteries are sitting right next to it, because of that one battery failure, the other batteries sitting next to it will also start seeing a thermal runaway failure. And that'll cause the whole factory uh, to see a failure. So, right, so that we have many, many attempts and many, many kind of checkpoints where we can stop this from happening, which is why it's important to, first of all, uh, sit with the cell manufacturer and understand what type of safety procedures they're doing, what type of testing they're doing to make sure that it doesn't happen in the first place, even in a single cell. But if it does happen in a single cell, our next job is to make sure it does not propagate to adjacent cells. 
And then for whatever reason, if we've done everything possible, but still this, the single cell failure has propagated to multiple cell failure and a failure of our pack, then it's our job to make sure that that pack failure does not propagate to surrounding packs or if that pack is sitting inside some sort of a product, some sort of a vehicle, it's our very important job to make sure that that pack failure does not propagate to uh, a product failure and cause harm to people who are using that product. So I hope you found this video useful and it gave you a sense of understanding of how thermal runaway propagates and what you can do at different stages to stop it. And I teach, if you're interested in learning more, I teach a, a more detailed course which goes into a lot of different aspects of what you can do to stop these failures and really understanding how these failures are happening by diving deep into cells and pack constructions. So if you want to learn more on this, you can go to makermax.ca slash battery safety. Thank you so much for watching.